Hey, how's it going and welcome to my second video. This one's going to be about showing you my stream settings and how I set up. It's not really a how-to, but basically a show you. Alright, so the first one we're going to go to is settings and we'll focus on scenes and sources later on. So settings, on general, if you want to have a dark theme like this, all you have to do is just go to theme and then enable dark and then press apply. Stream settings, I'll talk about this later after I get through these other tabs here. So output tab. Um, streaming audio track is one encoder NVENC H.264 Enforce rescale output is unchecked but I have 1920 by 1080 my CBR is basically 3200 bitrate <clears throat> and keyframe interval at 2 now you can increase this bitrate as much as you want to but remember that the more you increase it the better your quality is but the more strain it might put someone's internet through while trying to view you. That's what I have on 3200 because I feel like it's a good balance of between quality and internet access for other people. It could put a strain on people's internet. So be careful when you put it on bitrate. All right, so recording, we're gonna ignore that because it's not local that we're doing. That was my first video. So if you wanna learn about that, just go to my first video. The audio tab, we're gonna put it at 160. Um, I put it out 160 because 160 is on a certain codec that it enables itself to work. I'm not sure if they fixed it or not, but I noticed that some audio bit rates don't work. There's a certain um, codec that's on 160 that enables it to work. So just to be safe, just put this to 160. Audio tab, sample rate is 441 and these two over here which is desktop and mic audio device are the main two that we're going to be talking about the desktop audio device should be your sound that's coming out of the computer that's the one that you want to select the audio device for your microphone should be the microphone that you're using right now mine is microphone yeti i have these disabled because i have no use for it but for example if you want to have more than one microphone you can and if you want to have more than one you know, source of sound coming out, you can. All right, video tab. On base, 1920 by 1080. Output, 1280 by 720. Downscale, landscale, sharpening, scaling, 32 samples. The highest setting you can. Now, I have it downscaled a bit to 1280 to by 720 because it kind of lessens the load on your CPU and it just runs more smoother when you have it with 60 FPS. Now, since you have landscales here, this will basically kind of imitate 1920 by 1080 so there's really no change between it all you're doing is lessening the CPU load and advanced is kind of copy everything that I have here but it should be the same if on default alright so for the stream settings I run it on a custom server I don't run it specifically on Twitch and YouTube gaming I run it on a certain platform called Restream that allows me to stream on both of those services at the same time. So if we go over here, you should see Restream.io on the website here. You want to sign up, make an account, and then add your channel so that way you can have both channels here that you can stream to. Your URL and the stream key is right here, so all you have to do is just copy and paste it right here and you should be good to go. Okay. so. Here's my whole little setup for sources, and here's my setup for scenes. For scenes, I have break time and YouTube stream. Break time is, you know, if I'm leaving and, you know, I want to have a certain transition because that looks nice. So if you look at it, you see how it kind of fades in? That's like I have it on two different sources and not, you know, all the way up here where it can kind of like cover the entire screen. For YouTube stream, I have its own scene, and I have it kind of like placed in a certain order so that way it looks nice. I have three different game captures. I have game, window, and monitor. Monitor is called display captured. It's just worded different and I also renamed it by just right clicking and renaming it here. My visor is here which is turning off on, on and off right there. Now if you're wondering where I got my visor or how I placed it there, I basically made it in Photoshop and kind of made an image file of it and then pasted it there. Then after that, it kind of like fits itself on the screen by basically just going here to transform and fitting to screen. I have two standbys here, so it covers the screen. So if I'm starting a stream up, 
I can cover that screen below and have this here. And I usually have it with the timer, which is right there. Okay, that looks nice, right? I have the timer right there and it's counting down. Bam, bam, bam. Now, if you're wondering where I got this timer from, I got it from this place called timeme.com. Turn these off and on top of that, we have technical text and difficulty text. So it kind of covers everything that's below here. So that way, if I'm having trouble, I can kind of work behind the scenes while this screen is up. Now, if you're wondering where I'm getting these awesome ass gifts from, it's this place right over here called 1041uuu.tumblr.com. She makes these awesome ass gifts and it's really freaking cool. And that's how I keep using these because you just have to admit how beautiful and how cool these are. Now, I'm not sure if it's a she, but if it's a he, you know, thank you. I really appreciate it. Okay, Windows cap video and title is basically windowed mode. You don't have to record a game with windowed mode. You can actually kind of capture other windows. Okay, so what exactly is a browser source? So if you click the plus button here, under sources, you should see browser source. Now, if you right click it and go to properties, you should see you should be able to add an URL, meaning that if you want something to consistently appear like a subscriber account and you don't always want to have a window open on the side, then all you have to do is just post the URL there and you will get what I have here, right there. So meaning you don't have to have a window open all the time. Just post the URL and then bam, you have it there consistently all the time. All right, so for my mixer over here, I have this on one track, not separated into one and this one's two and then the rest are blank. No, this is just both on one track because for some reason if you try to separate it, it doesn't work and no audio will appear on your end when you're streaming. My desktop audio on properties is the audio that's coming out of my speakers and the microphone should obviously be the microphone that you're using to talk. Now I have this on mute because there's really no reason to have it on because I'm just kind of showing you how I do things. But just to make sure it works. Blah, 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 blah. blah. See? See? There, you, there go. you go. It works. It works. So you just make sure these two here are basically what you're using. And if, and if it doesn't work, if you're seeing no audio things go up here, it's possibly because you need to go to properties and do exactly what like I did a couple of seconds ago. Just kind of like go over here and click your speakers and then press OK. Since I'm done here, I can kind of show you a, a couple of places where I kind of play music in the background. One, it's copyright free, and two, you should have no problem like running these things at all. So, I go to this place called Airwave Music. It's copyright free music. If you go to the About section, all you have to do is just kind of like label the people that um, supply you with the music. And here it is. It's called Airwave Music TV. The second site is kind of highly known and it's called NCS, No Copyright Sounds. The title says it all and if you go to the about section, do the same thing. Just kind of like name the artist that you have playing in the background. Or you can just go to my playlist where basically I have music that is copyright free and is being updated every single day. I have a bunch of music that you can use and so far every single one that I've used has no copyright on it. The final place that I use for my music is a place called Dagobah. Basically, it plays a huge selection of uh, video game music and some possible anime music. So yeah, it's a huge list and you should really use this place. Okay, and the second thing I want to show you is also my moderators. My bots. For Moobot, this is my moderator for Twitch. For Nightbot, this is my moderator for YouTube. I have two different places since I'm streaming and since I can't be on both on the same time to you know moderate the comments, it's best that you use Moobot for Twitch and Nightbot for YouTube. And I have commands on them so that way um, if anything goes wrong or if anybody needs any you know tips, there you go. The same thing is for Moobot. Another thing is basically pop-ups. I use Streamlabs for donations and also for alerts. So basically, if somebody follows, subscribes, donates, or hosts or whatever, the alerts will pop up on your stream. As long as you have it enabled here, then you're fine. For alerts for YouTube, I use a place called LivestreamAlerts.com. It's kind of like the same thing as Streamlabs, but it's for YouTube. So 
since Streamlabs doesn't have alerts built for YouTube yet, you have to use a site that can be used for alerts on YouTube. Okay, so just go to the site, set up your account, and then make your things away. I'm not going to really teach you how to do this, but I can show you the end results. So here's one that I made called YouTube Subscribers. So I'm going to test this real quick. And there you go, it works. <laughs> Alright, so everything is done, but the final thing that I want to show you is my setup. I have two monitors, so basically I have a bunch of things going on on the second monitor as I play my game on the first one. So hold up as I set up my second monitor. Okay, I'm on my second monitor, so basically this is how it looks for me every time I stream. I have the chat box here which Restream provides you, so basically it picks up both streams chat. So if you have Twitch chat on the side and you have YouTube chat on the side, it merges it all into one and it posts it here. And if you want to reply to them, you can. You can reply to all chats or you can specifically reply to a single chat. So if I type here, be like, yo. It'll type to Twitch, yo. And it'll also type to YouTube, yo. And if the chat is talking to you, bam, it also appears here. It also shows you your viewer account on both channels combined. So if you have Twitch and YouTube running again, and you want to know how many um, viewers you have in total, it'll show you right over here where this eye icon is. This 2 out of 2 over here means both of your streams are active and they're ready to go, meaning that they're both working and that they're both on. So it, it'll indicate saying that one of your streams is offline or it's not working the way it's supposed to be. So that's a comment says 2 out of 2 because mine is working perfectly and it's fine. Alright, so you have a bunch of options here that you can work with. And if you come over here, you can mess with all this stuff, accounts, filters, windows, notifications, blah, 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 and all that good stuff. This is how I usually have it. I basically have OBS on the bottom here, my window on the side here, and my chat over here all the time so I can be able. And then on my left side, which is my first monitor, I'm, I'll be playing the game. So what you're looking at right now, again, is my second monitor. Now if I want to play music, like this. I can! I can play music and play those video games! So yeah, that's basically about it. The third video will be out soon, and thank you for coming by. I appreciate it.